Welcome back to The Bad Word. I am your host, uh, David Shelton. And uh, yeah, let's get this shit started. Um, let's talk about the two-party system, shall we? Or as I like to call it, uh, the election 2016, AKA being caught between a war hawk and an orange face. Let's be honest, the 2016 election is uh, it's, it's absolutely depressing. Uh, we're, legit we're stuck with only two legitimate choices. We're stuck with option A, who is uh, the teacher who caught you passing notes in class and then made you read them in front of the entire class. And then we're caught with, and then we're stuck with option B, the talking racist version of Young Goose from the new Pokemon game, which I'm fucking psyched about. Hashtag nerdgasm. How did we get stuck with only two legitimate options? Now, this is, this is the most important thing that Americans vote on, you know, other than dancing with the stars, and really don't have much to choose from. Now, there are, I should say this, there are technically two other candidates running for president, Gary Johnson and Joe Stein. However, neither candidate is polling over 10%, and in August, uh, Jill Stein was polling behind Harambe, the gorilla, and Dee's Nuts in Texas. That means that a living human female was, less, was actually less popular than a dead ape, a, a fake pair of nuts, and an actual ape who is nuts. I guess we should ask, why aren't they popular? Now, one reason is media. Media just doesn't care. Jill Stein has been mentioned 1,400 times in the media. Gary Johnson has been mentioned 4,000 times. I guess, for frame of reference, uh, Mike Huckabee, who, again, no one cares about him. He barely got through the primaries. He was mentioned 11,000 times. Ted Cruz was mentioned 88,000 times. Jeb Bush was mentioned 110,000 times. And Bernie Sanders was mentioned 886,000 times. Hillary Clinton was mentioned 500 or a half a million times. And Donald Trump was mentioned, has been mentioned over a million times in the media. So media just doesn't care. It's not just about media. There are, we also have debates. But Gary Johnson and Jill Stein haven't really had the chance to um, raise their stock. They haven't had the chance to shine in debates. But why? Well, because fuck you, that's why. See, according to the Federal Election, the Federal Election Commission, or the FEC for short, uh, under the 2016 criteria, in addition to being constitutionally eligible, candidates have to uh, appear on a sufficient number of um, state ballots to have, well, a mathematical chance of winning. And let's be honest, neither of them do. But they also need 50, at least 15% of the support of, a, of the national electorate. Third party candidates uh, have an even tougher time getting noticed because, I mean, it just no one cares. Now, to be fair, in terms of debates, it's not exact that, you know, one good debate performance will magically make everyone like you and you'll, and you'll have a, a legitimate chance of winning. But, I mean, it doesn't really hurt to have a chance. Now, again, and again, to be fair, you know, debates, debate performances elected or affecting poll numbers you know, we, we really didn't see that for John Kerry, George H.W. George H. W. Bush, or Ronald Reagan, who all did either really well or not so well, and still managed to lose or win. But then again, there's also the case for Clinton and Obama, who did really well in their debates, and they ended up winning. And then for my younger viewers, uh, there's also the case of Richard Nixon. And if you don't know who he is, uh, he, during his first debate, perform, during his first presidential run, he ran against John, or John, John F. Kennedy, good old JFK. Peace out. Um, yeah, he ran against John F. Kennedy. And the one thing that sunk Richard Nixon was his awful debate performance and presence. So again, while debates aren't the be all end all for doing well, they can have an effect. Now we have to look at what's holding third 
third-party candidates back as a whole. One is, or well, another thing, I've already looked at one thing, another thing is culture. The United States has never had more than two parties. They never really needed them. Actually, fun fact, uh, James Madison, who was one of the earliest people to see value in political parties, he also believed that they would, they, he also believed that they served, they would serve a, more of a, a, a temper, for, as a temporary sort of, co they would serve as more temporary coalitions for elections that were um, especially controversial. The thing is, we've never had more than two political parties simply because we haven't needed them. In 1790, uh, it was estimated that we had 3.9 million people. And today, we have over 318 million. And also, only 60% of Americans actually claim a political party now. It's 31% 31, 31 claim Democrat, 29% claim Republican. We have 98.5 million registered Democrats and 92 million registered Republicans. And, and it's not... I guess what I'm trying to say here is that while we have 60% who claim a political party, we also have 40% who don't, who don't feel like they have a major party who speaks to their values. And well, frankly, that's that kind of sucks. Thing is, we have every race, religion, sexuality, creed, culture, ideology, and every kind of demographic in this country. Although if Donald Trump becomes president, He'll probably send everything that isn't white or orange to Guantanamo Bay. But we, have, we are a vast, we have such a vast and diverse electorate. And shouldn't that be reflected in the people who, in our government and in our political parties? If we're, if we're going to stick to this narrative of us needing them, shouldn't, we, shouldn't they reflect the values of all Americans and and not just, well, okay, 60% is a lot, but 40% is, I mean, it's a lot of people who kind of feel disengaged and gets disengaged and a little disenfranchised. Now, other than um, culture and media coverage and a debate commission that makes it difficult for third parties to get more involved Another issue is money. Libertarian and Green Party candidates simply don't have the, 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 the financial infrastructure to really contend with Democrats and Republicans. See, let's look at Gary Johnson. He's raised just under $7 million this election season. Jill Stein has raised just under $2 million. There are a few pro-Trump super PACs that have raised more than both combined. And those aren't even the big ones. One of the largest has raised over 160 million. Hillary Clinton's PACs have raised almost, or have raised over half a billion dollars. Now, campaign finance report, reform could take care of this. We, we actually made a video about it. Um, yeah, you should, you should go watch that, check our channel out. It's under my name, David Shelton. I mean, if you're watching this, you probably already know I have a channel, but you could be new. And you might not know I have a channel. So yeah, I have a channel. And I talk about campaign finance reform and a lot of other cool stuff. You should watch that. Anyway, now, it's not, but the thing is, it's not just campaign finance reform that needs to change. It's media coverage, it's the primary structure, and it's also the debate structure. I mean, I, and to be fair, I get it. The, the debates are for putting candidates against one another and testing, and testing their ideas and seeing what they ha seeing on a big stage what they really have to offer you. And you really don't, and you don't want some fringe lunatic out there making a fool of himself. You don't want a guy with crazy hair, tiny hands talking about how big his penis is on national television. The thing is, is that having more open debates could, op could open up more dialogue for more issues. But another thing that needs to change is you, American people. Now, more choices, or well, before I get to that, I just have to say, like, if you want better candidates, 
or if you want different candidates, just you have to get out and vote for different candidates. Or if you really care, if you really, really care, then go out, be, go out and be a candidate yourself. Why not? Can't be any worse than any of the other shit we have. But that brings me to this point. More choices, would, in theory, would be great. But, unfortunately, it's wishful thinking. See, not only are Americans stuck in their ways of the two-party system, but they're also stuck on stupid. See, if we include all four candidates we have now, we are left with a racist, xenophobic, pumpkin-faced poor man's Ross Perot who uses his tiny squirrel hands to grow up women. There's a woman who doesn't know how email works and who's about as genuine as pro wrestling and porn. And then there's anti anti vax Jill Stein. Before I go on, I should be fair to Jill Stein. She's not anti, she's not against vaccinations. She's just against drug companies' uh, corporate influence on, on vaccines and how vaccines are administered. Even though uh, most members of the vaccine and related biological products advisory committee work for academic and mental, and, uh, not mental, that's Donald Trump. They work for academic and medical institutions, not drug companies. But someone running for president should kind of know that. Just saying. And then finally, uh, there is your goofy friend who skipped social studies class to smoke pot, Gary Johnson. Here's the thing. If you want presidential candidates and if you want politicians and leaders who aren't disingenuous, who aren't disingenuous liars, degenerates, con artists, and who don't advance rape culture, then you have to heighten your standards. Here's the thing, America. If you, until you change, until you take it upon yourselves, the dickheads in office are just going to keep fucking the assholes who put them there. Whew. All right, I'm glad I got that off my chest. Um, yeah, happy voting. That, this has been The Bad Word. Uh, I've been your host, David Shelton. You can follow me on Twitter, at Real Dave Shelton. And, uh, yeah, good night. I need a drink talking about this election, man. Fuck. Fuck.